community. Holy is the gift of community, blessed the act of belonging. What you'll realize is in our new Moxor, they make it, instead of in the old prayer book, we used to do all three soundings of the shovar at the end of the service. In this Moxor, they do three different times of the service. However, we're also recognizing the length of our service. So what we've done is this year, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we'll do the full shofar service and tashlik together. So for us, this is a metaphoric waking up and rising. Later in our service, we will be sounding the shofar. But this is kind of get our juices flowing as we think, as we rise for the baruch on page 142. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, yotzer or uvorei choshech, oseh shalom uvorei et akol. Together in English, source of blessings, our eternal God, your power fills the cosmos, shaping light, creating darkness, making peace and fashioning all things. Infinite light is preserved in life's treasure house. Light from the darkness, God said, so what's so. Page 144. In love, you bring light to the earth and its creatures. Your goodness renews the creation each day. Infinite, varied, and rich are your works, divine artists. All of them wrought with wisdom. The whole earth is teeming with life. Awestruck by the universe, work of your hands. Let all life bless you, praise you, and celebrate the beauty of your light. Together, May you shine a new light on Zion, and may we soon be privileged to share in the light. Baruch Tadonai, Yotzer Hamarot. Blessed are our praise to you, Adonai, creator of the cosmic light. We continue together on the bottom of page 147. All life springs from a single fountainhead. Listen, Israel. Know the oneness at the heart of multiplicity. With love and reverence, bear witness to Makor Hachaim. Page 150. Shema. Please be seated as we continue on page 152. <laughs> Veshinantam levanecha, vedibarta bam, beshiftecha bevetecha, uvlachtecha vaderech, uvshochbecha, uvekumecha, uksartam leot al yadecha, vehayule totafot, veinecha, uchtavtam al mezuzot vetecha. Uvi Sharecha, the Mantis 
kerou va asitem et komits votai vitem kedoshim lelo echem ani adonai elo echem asher hotze etietchem meeretz mitzrayim liot lachem lelo him ani Adonai Eloheichem, Adonai Eloheichem, Emet. Page 163. <clears throat> Let us continue together at the bottom of the page. Remember the stories of slavery, and you will never stop working for freedom. Remember their fear at the edge of the sea and self-doubt will never defeat you. Remember when desperation turned to celebration and you will never let go of hope. Remember the words of the Baal Shem Tov, forgetfulness leads to exile. Remembrance is the secret of redemption. Page 164. <laughs> Page 166, in the words of Rabbi Nachman of Bratzlev, make every effort to pray from the heart. Even if you do not succeed, the effort is precious in the eyes of the Eternal One. Please rise for the tefillah. Adonai sifatai tiftach ufiya gitehilatecha Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu velohe avoteinu vimoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah. Ha'el ha'kadol ha'gibor ve'hanora El elyon Komel chasadim tovim Ve'konei ha'kol Ve'zocher chastei avot ve'imahot U'mevi geula l'ivnei v'neihem L'ma'an shemo ve'ahava Zochreinu Zochreinu lechayim Melech Chafiz v'chayim V'chotvinu V'sever ha'chayim V'chotvinu V'chotvinu 
Please be seated as we continue on page 175. If the congregation would please read the italic words. Let us embrace the day and its holiness. For this day is a throne of goodness and power. They drank in God's power on the high. But when the people of Israel failed to do God's will, they weaken, if one might say, God's power. So let this day recall your power and ours. Let it remind us of our promises kept and broken as we remind you of yours. Let this day be a throne of forgiveness. For today we are the accountants of our souls, the navigators of our hearts, seeking wholeness and new direction. And we seek you through signs of your presence in the arc of sacred history. God of ages past and future, God of this day, as you were with our mothers and fathers, be with us as well. Una Tana Tokev on page 174. Page 176. Ushofar Gadol Itaka, together in English. And so a great shofar will cry, Tikiya. A still small voice will be heard. Angels in a whirl of fear and trembling will say, Behold the day of judgment, for they too are judged. In your eyes, even they are not blameless. All who come into the world pass before you like sheep before their shepherd. As a shepherd considers the flock, when it passes beneath the staff, you count and consider every life. You set bounds, you decide destiny, you inscribe judgments. Page 178.
On Rosh Hashanah, this is written. On the fast of Yom Kippur, this is sealed. Together, how many will pass away from this world? How many will be born into it? Who shall live and who shall die? Who will reach the ripeness of age? Who will be taken before their time? Who by fire and who by water? Who by war and who by beasts? Who by famine and who by drought? Who by earthquake and who by plague? Who by strangling and who by stoning? Who will rest and who will wander? Who will be tranquil and who will be troubled? Who will be calm and who tormented? Who will live in poverty and who in prosperity? Who will be humble and who exalted? Page 180. But th through return to the right path, through prayer and righteous giving, we can transcend the harshness of the decree. <laughs> Page 184, please rise. We sanctify your name in, earth, in the earth as celestial song sanctifies your name in realms beyond our world. In the words of your prophet, holy, holy, holy is the God of heaven's hosts. The fullness of the whole earth is God's glory. As we turn to page 196, page 196. Elohei velohei avotenu vimotenu. Together, our God and God of the generations before us, may a memory of us ascend and come before you. 
May it be heard and seen by you, winning your favor and reaching your awareness, together with the memory of our ancestors, the memory of your sacred city, Jerusalem, and the memory of your people, the family of Israel. May we be remembered for safety, well-being, and favor, for love and compassion, for life and for peace on this day of remembrance. Zochreinu Adonai Eloheinu bo litova. Amen. Amen. Ufokdenu vo livracha. Amen. Vehoshienu vo lechaim. Amen. Eternal our God, remember us. Amen. Be mindful of us. Amen. And redeem us for a life of goodness and blessing. Amen. We continue on page 206. I would like to invite up our shofar sounders, Mitchell Ostrove, David Cannon, and Carolyn Dudek. Please rise. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav V'tzivanu lishmo akol shofar Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Shehechianu Vekiemanu Vehigianu Lazman hazeh Amen Tekia Shivarim trua Tikia Tikia Shivarim Tikia Tikia Trua Tikia Please be seated. Our reshet on the bottom of page 207. Our reshet is for Tino, Yerav, Lefanecha, Eram, Vinisa. Our reshet is for Tino, Yerav, Lefanecha, Eram, Vinisa. Page 208. God who is ours and God of our fathers and mothers, may our rest on the Shabbat bring you pleasure. Lead us to holiness through your mitzvot, and may each of us find a portion of Torah that is ours. You bestow such goodness. Teach us to be satisfied and to know the joy of your salvation. Let your holy Shabbat be our heritage, embraced freely and with love. And may all our people bring holiness to your name by resting on this day. Help us to serve you truly with purity of heart, for you are a faithful God whose truth stands forever. Baruch HaTadonai, Melech al Kol Haaretz, Mikudesh HaShabbat V'Yisrael V'Yom HaZikaron. Together, our praise to you, Eternal One, whose power pervades all the earth. You bring holiness to Shabbat, to the people of Israel, and to this day of remembrance. Page 209. Ritzi Adonai Eloheinu Be'angcha Yisrael U'tefilatom Be'ahava Tikabil 
Page 210. God who is ours, God of all generations, to you we are grateful forever. Rock and protector of our lives, your saving power endures from age to age. We thank you and tell the tale of your praise, your power in our lives, your caring for our souls, the constant miracles of your kindness. Morning and noon and night, we call you goodness, for your compassion never ends. We call you mercy, for your love has no limit. We call you hope, now and for all time. Page 216.
As we start this new year, these beautiful melodies and readings lift up our soul, remind us of our full potential of who we can be. During this moment of silent prayer and reflection, please take a moment not just to read words on a page, but share what's in your heart. Connect to a higher power, and if you're an atheist, connect to the world around you. We all have so much to become. We have so many gifts that we can use, and so much we hope we can be. This new year gives us opportunity. May we take the time to reflect and think. I would like to invite up Barbara and Frank Axel. In a moment, we are going to say the words of Avinu Malkenu. We say the word Avinu as a parent who is compassionate. Have patience with us. We say Malkenu as a ruler. Have patience with us. Have mercy upon us. The words of Avinu Malkenu not only raises our spirits, but it also lets us know that we believe 
the life we live has purpose. That at times, even though the world may seem out of our control, that there is a higher power with us. There is a hope that there is completeness in this world. We stand before the Holy One as we rise as one community for the Vinu Malkenu on page 223. I will say the Hebrew of the congregation says the English. Avinu Malkenu Shema Kolenu. Avinu Malkenu Chatanu Lefanecha. Avinu Malkenu Chamo Alenu Ve'al Alenu Vitapenu. Avinu Malkenu Kale Dever Vecherev Vera'av Mealenu. Avinu Malkenu Kale Koltsar Umastin Mealenu. Avinu Malkenu Kotvenu Besefer Chaim Tovin. Avinu Malkenu Chadesh Alenu Shina Tova. Avinu Malkenu Chonenu Vaanenu Ki Ein Banu Maasim Ase Imanu Sedacha Vechesed Vehoshienu. Avinu my kenu chod mul aleinu. Avinu my kenu chod tonu lefanecha.
page 227. Two hundred and twenty-eight. Adonai, Adonai,
So we have many people who are helping us this Shabbat and this Rosh Hashanah. Um, the blessing for Torah can be found on page 230, and the text when we are reading will be found starting on page 240. We have five aliyot this Shabbat and five different Torah readers. The first Torah reader is Cantor Glassman, and our first aliyah is Jeff and Greta Birnbaum. Baruch Adonai and Baruch Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai and Baruch Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaLam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol HaLamim. Binatan Lanu Esorotu. Baruch Atah Adonai, Notein HaTorah. Amen. Amen. הדברים האלה, והאלוהים נישא את אברהם, ויאמר, כך נא... ויאמר אליו אברהם, ויאמר הנני, ויאמר, כך נא... את יחידך אשר אהבת את יצחק ולך לך אל ארץ המוריה והלהו שם לעולה על אחד ההרים אשר אומר אליך וישכם אברהם במור ויחבוש את חמורו, ויקח את שני נעריו איתו, ואת יצחק בנו, ויבקע עצי עולה, ויקום וילך אל המקום אשר אמר לו האלוהים. ביום השלישי וישא אברהם את עיניו וירא את המקום מרחוק ויאמר אברהם אל נעריו שבו לכם פה עם החמור ואני והדער נלכה עד כה ונשתחווה ונשובה עליכם. ויקח אברהם את עצי העולה וישם על יצחק בנו ויקח בידו את האש ואת המאכלת וילכו שני Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher natan lanu terat emet, v'chaye olam natah b'tzilchenu, Baruch atah Adonai, notein ha'terat. Amen. For our second Aliyah, I would like to invite up Alan Fishbane and Jennifer Herps, and our Torah reader is Dylan Lehrman. Our 
For the third Aliyah, I'd like to invite up Gary and Janet Fry, and for our Torah reader, Sally Meisner. And for Sally, I'm going to, in front of the Torah, we also want to wish her a mazel tov that she is now the principal of a Jewish day school, Road of Shalom Middle School. And we just are so honored that even busy with a new job and a new school year, that you're reading Torah. So thank you. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Barchavanu Mikol Hamim. Benan Talanu Et Torato. Baruch Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Vaikra Ela. Karanai min hashamayim, vayomer Avraham, Avraham vayomer himeni, vayomer al tishlach yadecha el hanar ve'al ta'aslo me'uma ki ata yadati ki Elohim ata. Velo chasachta et bincha et yechidacha mi meni. Vaisa Avraham et enav. Vayar vehine ayil achar. Neechaz basvach bekarnav. Vayelech Avraham veyakach et ha'ayil. 
Vayalehu leolam tachat bino. Baruch atadonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher baruch asher natan lanu tarat emet dechaye olam natab betochenu baruch atadonai notein haTorah. For our fourth Aliyah, we invite up Bertie and Len Stein, and for Torah reading, Andrew Cohen. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Ba'ed Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Ba'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Bar Harbanu Mikol Hamim Betan Lanu Torah To Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen. Vaigra Abraham, Shem Hamakom, Hahu Adonai Yere, Asher Yeamer Hayom, Behar Adonai Yere, Vaigra Malach Adonai El Abraham, Shenid Min Hashamayim. Vayomer vinishbati neumaronai ki hiaan asher asita et haravar hazeh velo hasachta et vincha et yehideha. Baruch atadonai. Eloheinu melech olam, asher natan lanu tarat emetet, v'chaye olam natat otokhenu, baruch atat onoin, notein atorah. Amen. For the fifth aliyah, I'd like to invite up Marjorie and Mark Mango, and the tour reader is their son, Charlie. <laughs> I guess Zach is joining as well. It's a whole family event. Amen. Kivarech avarechecha v'harba arbe edzaracha kichok v'hashamayim v'chacho asher al safat hayam v'irash zaracha et sha'ar oivav v'hit barachu v'zaracha Ko goye ha aret e kev asher shamata bikoli vayashov avraham el ne arav 
Vayakumu Velchu Yachtav El Be'er Shava Vayeshev Avraham Di Ve'er Shava Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Vechayei Olam Natan B'Tochinu it is our tradition when the Torah is out that we turn to page 245 for our prayer for healing. We hope that God gives strength to those who need healing of body and spirit. We know that our prayers bring them support and strength. We hope that this new year, that their bodies and souls are healed, and so are ours. Because we are a large congregation, we'll take a moment of silence to say the names in our hearts. Adonai, please be with them all and bring them peace as we sing here our prayer on page 245. I would like to invite up Mira and Dave Roberge. I, I can also invite up the whole family if they would like. I didn't know we were going to have friends from college back home, so come on up if you would like. As we turn to page 246 for lifting the Torah and dressing the Torah. Please rise. Please rise. Moshe, he made 
We continue on page 247. I'd like to invite up Dahlia Levine and Michael Weiss for our blessings and reading of the Haftorah. The text will be found on page 250. And there was a man of Ramatai and Sophim from the hills of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Yerucham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Tzuf, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives, one named Chana and the other named Penina. Penina had children and Chana had no children. And this man would go up from his town every year to worship at Shiloh and make offerings to the eternal of heaven's hosts. And there Eli's two sons, Chofni and Pinchas, were priests of the eternal. And on the day when Elkanah would make offerings, he would give portions to his wife, Penina, and to each of her sons and daughters. And to Chana, he would give a special portion, because he loved Chana, and the Eternal had closed her womb. And her rival wife would taunt her cruelly to make her tremble with grief, for the Eternal had closed her womb. And so it was, year after year, when she would go up to the house of the Eternal, she taunted her, and she would cry and not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Chana, why do you cry, and why do you not eat? And why are you disheartened? Am I not worth more to you than ten sons? And Chana arose after eating and drinking at Shiloh, while Eli the priest sat upon the, the throne near the doorpost of the temple of the Eternal. And she, bitter to the core, prayed to the Eternal, weeping and crying. And she vowed and said, Eternal of heaven's hosts, if you will truly see your servant's affliction and remember me, and not forget your servant, and give your servant a son. I will give him to the eternal all the days of his life, and no razor shall be lifted to his head. And as her praying before the eternal intensified, Eli watched her mouth, and Chana, she was speaking only in her heart. Though her lips were moving, her voice could not be heard. So Eli thought she was drunk, and Eli said to her, How long will you persist in drunkenness? Put away your wine, get rid of it. And Chana answered and said, No, my lord, a woman of sorrow am I. I drank neither wine nor spirits, but poured out my soul before the eternal. Do not take your servant for a worthless woman. All this time I have spoken from the depth of my anger, from the greatness of my grievance. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant the request you have made. And she said, May your servant find grace in your sight. And the woman went on her way, and she ate, and her face was no longer as it had been. And they awoke early in the morning and worshipped before the Eternal, and they went home, returning to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Chana, his wife, and the Eternal remembered her. And so it was that, at the turn of the year, Chana conceived, and then gave birth to a son. And she called him Samuel, because I requested him from the Eternal. And the man Elkanah and his whole household went up to make the annual offerings to the Eternal and to fulfill his vow. But Chana did not go up, for she said to her husband, until the boy is weaned, then I will bring him. Once he appears before the Eternal, he will stay there forever. Elkanah, her husband, said to her, do what you think is best. Wait until you have weaned him. Surely the Eternal will fulfill what your mouth has uttered. So the woman stayed and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her, with a three-year-old bull, one ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Eternal to Shiloh. And the boy was young. They slaughtered the bull and brought the boy to Eli. And she said, Please, my lord, as you live, my lord, I am the woman who stood here before you, stood here with you, praying to the Eternal, it was for this boy that I prayed, and the Eternal granted my request. 
I, in turn, grant what eternal asks of him. As long as he lives, he is dedicated to the eternal. And he, there they worship the eternal. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Sur kol amim sadik b'chol hadorot Ha'el hanemon ha'mer v'oseh Am daber un kayen Shekol devarav emet v'atzedek Al ha'torah v'al ha'vodah v'al ha'nevim V'al yom ha'shabat hazeh Val yom hazikaron hazeh, shana tata lanu Adonai Eloheinu, liktu shav limnucha, lechavod ultifaret. Al hakol Adonai Eloheinu, anachnu modim lach, umbarchim otach, yitbarach shimcha befikol chai, tamid leolam vaed. Utvarcha emet v'kayam la'ad Baruch ata Adonai Melech al kol ha'aretz Mekadesh ha'shabat Melech al kol ha'aretz Mekadesh ha'shabat Melech al kol ha'aretz Mekadesh ha'shabat V'Yisrael v'yom hazikaron Our Torah and Haftorah portions are actually very difficult ones. They are texts that talk about offering our children as gifts to God. In Torah, it's Abraham physically offering up Isaac, and that a ram is caught in the thicket, and an angel of God calls out to Abraham, saying, bring forth this ram. And that is why we blow the shofar, one of the reasons why we sound the shofar, is to remember that ram. The second, the Haftarah, the parallel reading from the prophets, is a story about Samuel. Samuel becomes the prophet who anoints first King Saul and then King David, the only king to ever unify the people of Israel. While in some ways this is a very uplifting reading, it's also a painful one. So I would like to offer a special prayer. God, we pray with and for those of us who seek children in our lives and whose prayers have not yet been answered. We mourn for them, with them, for the losses which too often are unspoken and invisible, for miscarriages, for failed pregnancies, for infertility, and for unconsummated adoptions. We pledge our love and support for them. We pray with them for healing from the pain we pray with them for the strength to sustain unfulfilled dreams. And we pray, O oh God, that the deepest wishes of their hearts will be fulfilled in the year which stretches ahead. As together we say, Amen. It is so beautiful to see our congregation here, to see the multi-generations that come together. If you read any of the polling in the world, especially in the United States, about faith, it's easy to see that the world, or at least American society, is turning away from religion. Even statistically, Jews are seen running for the hills from organized religion that in the world today, you don't need to be in a synagogue to pray, to have a bar bat mitzvah, to study, to live Jewish life. So the question I wonder is, are synagogues still needed? I know this seems rash or flippant as a question since we're all here right now, but it's a very serious question. In the last year that I've been here, there's been numerous times where people have said, 
I remember the day when there was four services at Temple Israel, that this whole social hall and sanctuary was filled, as well as upstairs, and there was two services that went on. And with heartache, they say, what number are we? How many congregants do we have? And what I like to think about is, we are connecting one soul at a time. Back in the day, there was maybe not as many active reform congregations as there is today. And some of the demographics have changed. So what is our purpose at Temple Israel? If we're just going to be another shul in Westchester, we, we should call it a wrap. But I believe we have a special purpose. Congregations have a calling. If you think about it, this year, the reform movement in America is turning 150 years old. Temple Israel itself is celebrating its 115th anniversary. We come from a tradition of progress, of justice, and of faith. We need to look back and see where we come from. Many come here because this sanctuary brings peace and comfort. They think about the generations that have come before them, celebrating holidays with loved ones whose spirit are with us but are physically no longer on this earth, as well as simchas like bar and bat mitzvah, where they see their children or their grandchildren up on this bima, and it brings them so much pride. What I've learned is for us to continue to have a strong future, we need to have purpose. No longer is success by numbers. We are not quantitative in our approach. We are qualitative. How are we impacting the lives of each individual purpose, purpose, person here? For what I've learned is Jewish guilt doesn't really work anymore. <laughs> if it's boring, if it's long, if it doesn't meet your needs, you move on. So what do we need to become? First, we need to be authentic. We need to be whole in here. In the world, there's so much fakeness. How are you doing as I walk on to my next step? Oh, it's so good to see you, and I stop listening. When we come into the space, not just the sanctuary, but when we become Temple Israel, let us slow down, make eye contact, really listen to the person we're talking to, really connect to their soul, B'Tselm Elohim, where each individual is a spark of the divine, that sacred connection that we need and we yearn for. Let us slow down and see people for who they are, and hopefully they will see us too. Let us have integrity. There's too much nastiness in the world where we're not held responsible for the words we say and the actions we do. We can hide behind a computer and say disgusting, horrible things, thinking it has no real impact. That impulsive anger that is out in society has no place here. We can have different political viewpoints, different understandings, and we make room to listen. Share who you are. Let's not talk talking points. Let's share authentic moments with integrity of what we believe and what we think so we can wrestle just like our ancestors, B'nai Yisrael, just like Jacob wrestled with the angel of God. Let us wrestle with how to make meaning in the world of today. And most importantly, let us continue the legacy of community. So many times I talk to congregants who say, this is where they made their best friends. This is where their kids grew up and they came and they felt connected. We have wonderful programs with our brotherhood and our sisterhood. We have social action and different things to get involved. This year, we're even starting a 30s and 40s group, trying to connect this next generation of younger congregants um, with one another. Because post-COVID, we've realized how in the past it was easy to make friends, it's become harder. Let us also make sure we're inclusive. One thing we've learned about as a reform movement is we thought we were so good at welcoming people. Welcoming is more than just saying, please join us. It's how we use language. It's our mission. It's how we make sure how we live each and every day matches our ideals. 
be it race and ethnicity, sexuality and gender identity, people with disabilities, those who have challenge when it comes to income and financial security. There are so many ways that we do not yet understand the world in other people's eyes. It is our obligation to make room, not just to welcome diverse arrays of people into our community, but to help them shape our future. This is what it means to be reform in the 21st century. And I would argue it also means that we must have true spirituality here. People are seeking purpose. People are seeking holiness. At one time in the 90s, they called themselves Jubus, who were looking at Buddhism and other things because we were afraid that Judaism didn't have real spirituality. But we do. We can learn from our neighbors and we can learn from our friends. And yet there's a reason why Judaism has been around for 2,000 years. It has wisdom about daily living. Let us learn this wisdom. Let us hold ourselves account accountable. Let us be there for one another. When we truly live Judaism, there is joy, not just obligation, but beauty and joy. I can tell you this because as a rabbi, I get to share life with you. And it's at some of the hardest moments of your life that I find to be the most awe-inspiring, where I connect to your souls and you connect to mine. And I know we're not alone in this world. Too often, we get bogged down in daily life, and we show up here emotionally exhausted. Let us let go of the world. Let us find the depths that we know we're searching for, and let us be true to one another. These gifts will make us strong, because we are a multi-generational communal home. It's amazing. We have five generations together here. As life keeps growing, as people live longer, we have the beauty and the challenge of bringing a diverse group together. So one even at this service might say, well, I like this, but I didn't like that. This tune called to me, but that tune missed the mark. That's okay. Because for the person sitting next to you, what missed the mark might be calling for them. What we need to do is make room where different generations talk to one another I know we have the Better Together, Together program where our teens and our seniors share life together. For those involved, they find it to be one of the most exciting parts of the year because even though we sometimes speak different cultural languages, we have one unique pur purpose, and that's uniting our lives in different ways. And we have role models and ways to connect in the joys of loving one another. I ask you, make room for people. It's easy to live in our silos. Make room for your neighbor. Get to know a face that you do not know. Kalal, the National Center for Jewish Leadership and Learning says, notice, name, and know. When we come here, we want to feel people see us, not for what we wear or for what our legacy is, but for who we are as people. Get to know people's names. The name tags are important. It's okay to look down and then look up. We're human. Nobody's perfect in remembering names. If you feel somebody should know your name and they don't, please have humility on these holidays and reintroduce yourself. Also, know people. It is our goal to do more intimate settings so that people can truly get to know one another. That is what I believe it will take for us to be successful. It's not just the high holidays, it's not events, it's sharing daily life, building community, and creating sacred pur purpose. In a secular world where our option is traditional religion or nothing, let us build a new path where we can be inclusive of our family members and our friends who are of re different religious backgrounds or no religion at all, that everybody feels welcome here, that this is a true place of open-mindedness and love where everybody can figure out what it means to have faith on their own terms. We use Judaism as a text and a tradition, and the key is living life. May Judaism and this congregation excite us to be the best we can be. May we use these high holidays to go out and be our best selves. 
It is so important that we build a congregation that is emotionally honest and intellectually curious. Let us study, let us learn from one another, let us be engaged. And I ask you to be our partners in making this as strong as we can be. I hope that this isn't the only time I get to see you in the next year ahead. And I hope next week isn't the last either. But it's a continued relationship where we're building and growing. Shana tova umetuka. May you have a sweet and healthy and happy new year. Amen. Another wise rabbi, like our wise rabbi, Rabbi Hillel, many, many years ago, gave us the teaching, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? If I am only for myself, what am I? And if not now, then when? Here is a modern interpretation by the American singer-songwriter Carrie Newcomer. If not now, tell me when. If not now, tell me when. If not now, tell me when. We may never see this moment or place in time again. If not now, if not now, tell me when. If not now, tell me when. Sing with me. If not now, tell me when. That's right. We may never see this moment or place in time again. If not now, if not now.
Let us continue on page 270. I would like to invite up Ellen Egan for a prayer for our congregation. Shana Tova, everyone. It's so good to see you. Eternal presence who blessed our mothers and fathers, bless this holy congregation, a house of study, prayer, and righteous deeds. Together, we give thanks for our leaders, for those who learn, teach, and uphold the Torah, inspiring others to learn, teach, and uphold the Torah those who do the sacred work of building our community. May their service bring them joy, fulfillment, and purpose. And may they go from strength to strength. For our members, diverse in age, interest, and background, Jews by birth and Jews by choice, and those of other faiths who join us with, with us, all who offer their time and talent, their love and commitment. For all who come here on this holy day of Rosh Hashanah to share the search for meaning and renewal, your presence is a blessing, your friendship a gift. May the spirit of peace, dignity, and respect within these walls inspiring us to care for one another with compassion, and may we be a source of goodness and light and healing for the world. May the one who blessed the generations before us stand as we stand together this day. One congregation joined with all Jewish communities of the world through our prayers on this festival of the new year. Let us renew ourselves for the year ahead. Let us honor the precious legacy that is ours. Shana Tova. I would like to invite up Ken Handelman for the prayer for our country on page 272. Prayer for our country. God of holiness, we hear your message, justice. Justice you shall pursue. God of freedom, we hear your charge. Proclaim liberty throughout the land. Inspire us through your teachings and commandments to love and uphold our precious democracy. Let every citizen take responsibility for the rights and freedoms we cherish. Let each of us be an advocate for justice, an activist for liberty, a defender of dignity. And let us champion the values that make our nation a haven for the persecuted, a beacon of hope among the nations. May our actions reflect compassion for all people within our borders and abroad. May our leaders and officials embody the vision of our founders to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. We pray for courage and conscience as we aim to support our country's highest values and aspirations, the hard-won rights that define us as a people, the responsibilities that they entail. We pray for all who serve our country with selfless devotion in peace and in war, from fields of battle to clinics and classrooms, from government to grassroots. All those who noble deeds and sacrifice benefit our nation and our world. We are grateful for the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that our founders ascribe to you, our creator. We pray for their wisdom and moral strength that we may be guardians of those rights for ourselves 
and for the sake of all people now and forever. I'd like to, I would like to invite up Morris Marcus for a prayer for the state of Israel on page 274. Avinu Shabashamayim, Tzur Israel Vegaolo, Barech et Medinat Israel, Rashid Smichat Goaltenu. Hagen alea beevrat chazdecha, ufros alea sukat shelomecha, ushlach orecha vamitecha, le rochea, sarea veyotzea, betaknem beetzato vamil fanecha, chazek et yedem megine eretz kotchenu, van chilem eloenu yeshua, veateret nitzachon teatrem, venatata shalom baaretz, vesimchat olam leyoshveha, Venomar Amen. You Avinu, you are high above the nation, states and people, rock of Israel, the one who has saved us and preserved us in life. Bless the state of Israel, first flowering flowering of our redemption. Be her loving shield, a shelter of lasting peace. Guide her leader and advisor by your light of truth. Instruct them with your good counsel. Strengthen the hands of those who build and protect our holy land. Deliver them from dangers. Crown their effort with success. Grant peace to the land, lasting joy to all of her people. And together we say, Amen. We turn to page 276, and we rise through the Elenu prayer. No, no, through the A precious teaching I have given you, my Torah. Do not forsake it, a tree of life to those who hold it fast. All who embrace it know happiness. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Take us back, Adonai. Let us come back to you. Renew in our own time the days of old. to invite up our shofar sounders as we continue while remain standing on page 283 together 
I know that poverty must cease. I know this through the brokenness and conflict in my heart. I know that protest is my most prophetic act and that the world is longing for a new soul, a new healing moment. I know that when we awaken to our origins and become truly human, we bring hope to the children and to the earth. I feel called today to bring the people together to break the bread and tell the story. I feel called today to be a mystic in action, aligned to this dynamics of the universe. I feel called today to give my gift, to listen to the heartbreak of the wor broken world, to heal the fragmentation of people and planet. I feel called today to celebrate the wonder of creation and respond to sacredness and the challenges of life. I feel called today to participate in the work of my time, to fall in love, to feel at home. I feel called today to be inflamed with enduring hope, to be at one with the universe, to be touched by God. I feel called today to compose a new paragraph for life. Page 284. Baruch Atadonai, Shomea kol truat amo Yisrael barachamim. Blessed are you in our lives, Adonai, who hear with love the shofar, true voice of your people Israel. Dikiyah. Shivarim truah. Dikiyah. Dikiyah. Shivarim Tikiya Tikiya Trua Tikiya Gedola Continue with Elenu on page 286. Aleinu lishabeach ladon hakol Latit gedula liotze breishit Shelo asanu kegoye haratzot Velo zamanu kemishpechot ha'adama Shelo sam chelkenu kaem Banachnu korim umishtachavim umodim lifne melech malchei hamlachim hakadosh baruchu. Please be seated. We continue on page two hundred and eighty-nine. May the time not be distant, our God, when all shall turn to you in love, when corruption and evil shall give way to integrity and goodness, when lies and bigotry shall not, no longer enslave the mind, nor idolatry blind the eye. So may all, created in your image, become one in spirit and one in friendship, forever united in your service. Then shall your dominion be established on earth, and the word of your prophet fulfilled, Adonai will reign forever and ever.
One of the blessings that we have is that we always have, or at least the last two years, but we have a tradition of wonderful lay partners who become president of the congregation. Believe me, if you think being the rabbi's hard, being the president's even harder. <laughs> and it is our great honor to invite up Margie Ostro, president of the congregation, to share a few words. Shana Tova. I'm going to take this paper clip off. I stand before you on this sacred occasion of the High Holy Days, full of gratitude and optimism. Usually I'm filled with joy when I have the opportunity to make the announcements at Friday night services and see all the faces of our congregants looking back at me. Uh, but today, looking out at our synagogue, I'm deeply moved to see so many of you. And honestly, <laughs> I'm a little terrified. <laughs> but I feel the love and support emanating from you all, so thank you. Today at Temple Israel, we find ourselves in a good place, a place of strength as a community. It's a testament to our collective dedication and resilience. Temple Israel's community is a tapestry of unique talents, perspectives, and experiences. It's through our engagement together that we unlock the true potential of our collective strength. Whether it's through volunteering, sharing our knowledge and expertise, saving a life, creating experiences, or simply lending an ear, our involvement shapes the character of our community and defines the impact that we can have on the world. Our goal for this year is to strengthen and build this community. Joining a synagogue is not just about finding a place to pray. It's about becoming a part of a vibrant, caring, inclusive, fun, and loving, and, and fun-loving community. Within these sacred walls, you'll discover a second family, a network of support during life's highs and lows, a place where faith is nurtured our traditions are celebrated, and our friendships are formed and maintained. Here in our synagogue, you'll find opportunities to deepen these connections, to study, to engage in acts of kindness through tzedakah, to cook, to eat, to drink, to do Pilates or yoga, to sing, to play basketball, to play cards, to go to camp, to laugh, to learn, to grow, and to continue to make lifelong friendships. So please keep an eye out for all of the events that Temple Israel will offer, from pickleball to matzo balls. <laughs> this is the place where your presence matters and your participation adds to everyone's experience. As I always say in Temple Topics, if you have an idea, please reach out to me. I'll listen and I want to hear it. In this community, I've personally experienced the full spectrum of life's moments, from joyous family celebrations to solemnity of farewells. And I look out and I see the faces of so many of you whom I've known my entire life. To me, this temple community is my extended family, and each one of you a cherished member. Together, let's continue to foster this sense of belonging. It's the foundation upon which our community stands. Together, let's reach out to those who may be newcomers and ensure that they too feel at home here. Let's be there for one another, not just on these holy days, but every day throughout the year. The words of our Kahila School theme song, Kahila Kadosha, meaning holy community, speak strongly to what I envision makes our temple such a special place. I'd like to share them with you. Each one of us must play a part. Each one of us must heed the call. Each one must seek the truth. Each one of us is a part of it all. Each one of us must remember the pain. Each one of us must find the joy. Each one of us 
So no pressure, but I think you get the message. Before concluding, I must express thanks to Rabbi Jesse and to Cantor Rita, who in just one short year have touched this community on an individual basis. Their supportive outreach to members of the community has revitalized and united us. I thank them for their guidance in worship, education, and song. Together, they bring a breath of fresh air to our old traditions and are introducing new ones. And we look forward to the days ahead for this community under their leadership. We're also blessed to have these talented musicians and our interpreters with us today. Thank you for adding to the beauty of this service and, contribu and contributing to the joy of our New Year's celebration. I want to acknowledge with extreme gratitude the work of our Small But Mighty Temple staff. Day in and day out, your dedication to this community is unwavering, and we thank you with all of our hearts. I also say thank you to all of you who give of yourselves by volunteering and supporting the activities and events that we offer here at Temple, including those who volunteer to usher these Holy Day services. Your welcoming and helpful greetings add to the joy and sense of belonging we all have when we come to Temple Israel. And to those members who make up our board of trustees, I offer a special acknowledgement and words of thanks. I'm honored to work with you all. The work can be difficult, but the rewards are phenomenal. And because your dedication, our congregation will grow and evolve as we enter our 116th year as a reformed Jewish community in Lower Westchester. I wish for you, your families, our friends and neighbors, our country and the state of Israel, a year filled with deeper connections, boundless love, and an unwavering sense of belonging. Each year, our community helps support the Hope Soup Kitchen. You'll notice outside the doors, we have brown paper bags for you to take home and fill with non-perishable canned goods and box goods. Please be cognizant of expiration dates. These bags can be brought back here to Temple at any time between now and Sukkot. Additionally, the sharing shelf, Westchester's clothing bank for children, has reminded us of the increase in poverty in our area. They are, see they are seeing an explosion of need right now. They have over 500 children and teenagers who are waiting for clothing. Fall and winter clothes and jackets and coats are needed. Please consider donating. Uh, please consider donating clothes that are in good condition and drop them off here in our giving corner at any time. After this morning's service, I invite you to please stay and join us at our wonderful Oneg in the courtyard. Shana Tova, may we continue to journey together. Page 291. There are stars up above, so far away we only see their light long, long after the star itself is gone. So it is with people that we loved. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night these are the lights that guide us. As we live our days, these are the ways we remember. Page 292. This Rosh Hashanah and the Shabbat, we think of those whose yard sites are currently observed. Tess K. Arbach, Arthur Balak, Jesse Bork, Milton Cantor, Estelle Dubin, Harry Fadum, Helen Fine, Dorothy Fisher, Moses Frankel, Samuel W. Friedman, Bernard Hecht, Rose F. Hines, Leonard Carlin, Elizabeth Kastenstein, Peter R. Kuhn, Anna K Kushner, William J. Leffler, Ruth Farkas Mendelssohn, Mort Newberg, Juliet F. Potter, Seymour Sanders, Julia Seidenstein, Edward Shapiro, Ellen G. Schatz, David Scott Silver, Sophie Starr, Esther Stein, 
Stephen Gary Wasco, Irving Weinberger, Nettie Weissman. We also think of those who are in our hearts, those of our people who have no one to say Kaddish for them, and those of all backgrounds who have made this world a better place. In our loneliness, we still praise you, God. While we miss our loved ones, we know that our pain is a sign of our love. So as one community, we rise. Please note that in this Kaddish, in the middle of the page, there's an extra Ula Mikol, and towards the end, Ba'al Kol Yoshe Tevel. We join as one voice as we praise God's name. Ikadal Vikadash Me Rabbah, Bialman Divrahu Te, Bial Mikma Hute, Bechaye Hon Yume Hon, Uchaye to call Beat Israel, Bagala Bisman Kari Bimru Ami. Yehesh me rabba me vorach le olamu me o maya. Yit barach vish tabach vita arbitro man vitna se. Vita dar vita le vita lal shme kusha prihu. Le ela ul ela mi kol bir kata vishirata. Tushukata venechemata. Dami ram yaman vimru ame. Yehesh lama rabba mi shemaya. V'chaim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. O se shalom v'imru mav, hu ya se shalom. Aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'al kol Yoshvei Tevel v'imru amen. Please be seated. singing a blessing for the new year on page 294 Hayom Amen 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 Hayom Te Amen Before we do our final song, in Keloheno on page 299, we would like to do the mozi so that when everybody goes out into the courtyard, has a little nosh and a schmooze, a bite of eat and conversation with one another, that nobody has to wait. We invite you right away after the service. So let us say, Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMotzi Lechem Min HaAretz Amen. 
Can on the multitask. Yes, page 299 in Kelohini. Our God and God of our ancestors, thank you for this new year. Thank you for this community. May we celebrate life. May we have joy. May this push to be better human beings inspire our souls and open our hearts. We are all created in your image, in our diversity and our beauty. May we hear your voice in each and every person. May we see your holiness in the world around us. May this new year bring us hope and peace as together we say, Amen. Shana Tova. Let them do it.